In starting the topic of this video, I came across a company called Edmund Optics, and they sell something as innocent as optical equipment. However, when scrolling down to the bottom, some interesting things came up. Now, the company, allegedly according to their website anyway, is located in New Jersey, which of course is the United States. And down at the bottom, they have badges, one of which being the Perry Johnson Registrars Incorporated, UKAS Management Systems, NAB, and notice of course it has a torch. It's a interesting symbol of, to note. And something else called ITAR and Secure Trust. But for the purposes of this video, let's go ahead and look at the top three. With Perry Johnson Registrar's Quality Assurance, it is a ISO registration company. Now, for those that don't know what ISO is, that stands for International Standards Organization. It's an international organization that seeks to impart standards to companies internationally. And then, of course, Perry Johnson was allegedly a failed candidate for president or governorship or something like that, where it states that Johnson, the founder of Perry Johnson Registrars, ran for governor in Michigan a few years back and won 15 minutes of fame due to his purchase of an expensive Super Bowl ad, so on and so forth. So this Perry Johnson Registrar's Quality Assurance Company, which is based out of Michigan, registers companies under international standards. So it gets even more interesting from there. Because when it comes to UKAS, it is a management systems certificate. Again, with all of these coded words and whatnot. And then all we have to do is go to Wikipedia to find out more about UKAS, which stands for the United Kingdom Accreditation Service. And I'm sure it has a lot to do with that international standards organization, which is based out of a very interesting area of the globe. According to Wikipedia, it states the United Kingdom Accreditation Service, UKAS, is the sole national accreditation body recognized by the British government to assess the competence of organizations that provide certification, testing, inspection, and calibration services. It evaluates those these conformity assessment bodies and then accredits them where they are found to meet relevant international specified standards. And you got that ISO there. But also what should be noted is that these, this accreditation registration body is recognized by the British government and it assesses the competence of organizations that provide certification testing and inspection and calibration services. So essentially, it's kind of like the manager of the managers, so to speak. And it's got other information about it mainly being that the chair, chairman is somebody named Lord Lindsay and its parent organization, meaning who's in charge of it, is the Department of Business, Energy and Industrial Strategy. Department, of course, being a department of the United Kingdom government. Then we go into ANAB or ANAB, which is a similar type of organization as the other two where it states that the ANSI National Accreditation Board ensures the safety and quality of goods and services the company accredits certification bodies calibration testing labs forensic test and calibration service providers inspection bodies police crime units reference material producers and proficiency test providers so there we get a little more specifics about what they do, but less about who they are. Now, before we ask the question about why is it important that you have international bodies and the United Kingdom enforcing standards in the United States, an allegedly sovereign entity, 
Let's go ahead and look at the Department of Justice article that reads, quote, Amgen, Inc. pleads guilty to federal charge in Brooklyn, New York, pays $762 million to resolve criminal liability and false claims act allegations. Notice the wording there. They paid, essentially, what this is stating is that the company paid off the people who are allegedly supposed to hold them accountable. They won't state it like that, but that's pretty much what it's saying. And biotech giant pleads guilty to illegally introducing drug into market for uses that the FDA noticed DNA are lowercase there. That's interesting. Declined to approve. Will pay $612 million to resolve false claims act suits and $150 million in criminal penalties and forfeiture. Emmett Source Burge. Berg. Burge. How do you say that? Earlier today at the federal courthouse in Brooklyn, New York, U.S. District Judge Sterling Johnson Jr. accepted a guilty plea by American biotechnology giant Amgen Inc. Amgen for illegally introducing a misbranded drug into interstate commerce. The plea is part of a global settlement with the United States in which Amgen agreed to pay $762 million to resolve criminal and civil, civil liability arising from its sale and promotion of certain drugs. Now notice that it says, it says there, global settlement so apparently the united states is able to adjudicate global settlements there is definitely something going on here with this article the settlement represents the single largest criminal and civil false claims act settlement involving a biotechnology company in u.s history that of course would be the corporate u.s history meaning the u.s corporation so, there's a little word game there. The announcement was made by Stuart F. Dellery, Principal Deputy Assistant Attorney General for the Justice Department's Civil Division, Marshall L. Miller, Acting U.S. Attorney for the Eastern District of New York, Jenny A. Durkin, U.S. Attorney, Western District of Washington, Carmen M. Ortiz, U.S. Attorney for the District of Massachusetts, Thomas, Thomas O'Donnell, Special Agent in Charge, U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Office of Inspector General, HHS OIG, New York Regional Office, John Roth, Director, U.S. Food and Drug Administration, FDA, Office of Criminal Investigations, Eric Schneiderman, New York State Attorney General, and George Venizelos, Assistant Director in Charge of the FBI's New York Field Office, along with numerous law enforcement and regulatory partners. I wonder who those law enforcement and regulatory partners are. Perhaps ISO, maybe? Some other international? Oh, perhaps it's UCAS. The United Kingdom government directly stipulating the standards for U.S. companies. I love that one. As part of the plea agreement and criminal settlement, Amgen entered a guilty plea yesterday before U.S. District Judge Sterling Johnson of the Eastern District of New York to criminal information charging the company with illegally introducing a misbranded drug, RNS, into interstate commerce. Under the Food, Drug, and Cosmetic Act, it is illegal for drug companies to introduce into the marketplace drugs that the company intends will be used off-label. I always love how they put that illegal there. Unlawful isn't really important. Illegal is what's important, naturally, because the, these entities have no lawful authority to operate anyway. For uses or at doses not approved by the FDA, RN, RNSP is an erythro, erythropoiesis stimulating agent. Yeah, say that 10 times fast. ESA. That was approved by the FDA at calibrated doses for particular patient populations suffering from anemia. In order to increase sales of RNSP and reap the resulting profits, Amgen illegally sold the drug with the intention that it be used at off-label doses that the FDA had specifically considered and rejected, and for an off-label treatment that the FDA had never approved. Under the terms of the criminal plea agreement, Amgen will pay a criminal fine of $136 million in criminal forfeiture in the amount of $14 million. I love how they play that game there. So that's about $150 million that they are naturally going to be paying to the uh, Department of Justice and all of these New York outfits and uh, specific regulatory and law enforcement partners. It's a, it's a payoff, of course, but it's also money laundering. 
part of the civil settlement, Amgen has agreed to pay $612 million, $587.2 million to the United States and $24.8 million to the states. Naturally, th that money would go into the pockets of corrupt politicians, lawyers, and other types of people that are involved in this scheme. That's how, about how it usually goes anyway. To resolve claims that it caused false claims to... to well, that's weird. To resolve claims that it caused false claims to be submitted to Medicare. Medicaid and other government insurance program. So basically, that's hush money. So they're, they're pretty much paying to resolve claims. So pay a bunch of money and it goes away, basically. Federal civil settlement agreement encompasses allegations that Amgen, one, promoted RNSP and two other drugs that it manufactured, Enbrel and Nolasta, for off-label uses and doses that were not approved by the FDA and not properly reimbursable federal insurance programs, offered illegal kickbacks to a wide range of entities in an effort to influence healthcare providers to select products for use, regardless of whether they were reimbursable by federal healthcare programs or medically necessary. Notice that one part, that little slipped in there, by the way. A little glossed over there. They were promoting things that were not medically necessary. Like that one, don't you? And engaged in false price reporting practices involving several of its drugs. As part of the global settlement, Amgen has agreed to enter into a corporate integrity agreement, or CIA, with HHS OIG that will govern its conduct and ensure careful oversight of its branding and marketing practices. Now, isn't that a nice acronym right there? CIA. Today's resolution reinforces Department of Justice's commitment to cracking down on unlawful conduct by pharmaceutical companies, said Civil Division Principal Deputy Assistant Attorney General Delery. When drug companies improperly misbrand their products, they not only put individual patients at risk, but they also undermine the federal health care system that protects all of us. Now, notice the word game that is being played here, allegedly being said by this assistant deputy. deputy Civil Division Principal Deputy Assistant Attorney General Deller. That's, boy, that's a title. Allegedly, this person is stating that they are cracking down on unlawful conduct by pharmaceutical companies specifically. Maybe first they should crack down on their own unlawful conduct. That would be interesting. But they, the, the, the person also allegedly stipulates that what this company did was improperly misbrand their products even though right above it, a whole laundry list of other things were stipulated, including pushing things that were not, quote unquote, medically necessary. Sounds a little bit similar to a lot of stuff that's going on today. Instead of working to extend and enhance human lives, Amgen illegally pursued corporate profits while jeopardizing the safety of vulnerable consumers suffering from disease. And probably consumers also not suffering from disease, hence the medically unnecessary treatments and whatnot. Americans expect, and the law requires, much more. Well, yeah, no crap. Today's settlement demonstrates our vigilance, <laughs> yeah, sure, in protecting, I guess they're vigilantes then, in protecting America's health care consumers and pursuing any corporation that seeks to profit by violating U.S. law. Notice, not constitutional law, the supreme law of the land, mind you, but U.S. law, which is the tantamount to violating a corporate policy, said acting U.S. Attorney of the Eastern District of New York, Miller. To all who might consider introducing misbrand drugs in the marketplace, you are on notice. That's nice. We remain steadfastly committed to prosecuting such violations of law, Mr. Miller also expressed his appreciation to the offices of Inspector General for the of the Department of Defense, the Office of Personnel Management, and the Veterans Administration for their assistance. Isn't it nice? All the little ducklings are getting together. The public has been well served by this investigation, and the FDA commends the efforts of the U.S. Attorney General's Office in the Eastern District of New York. Now, mind you, that's the juridic public. Should note that. Not the human public. It's the juridic public. The Department of Justice and other law enforcement agencies that work with us to vigorously pursue this matter, said John Roth, director of the FDA's Office of Criminal Investigations and the FDA's Office of Regulatory Affairs. 
Today's settlement demonstrates our continued scrutiny of any illegal practices used by the pharmaceutical and biotechnical biotechnology companies. Yeah, right. I'm, I'm not even going to bother with that nonsense that he said there. Promoting drugs for unapproved purposes is beyond wrong. Oh, yeah, again, double speak. It jeopardizes the health and safety of the public. That's the juridic public. Said FBI Assistant Director Venice Salos. Preserving the integrity of the pharmaceutical industry, which of course they have none, is important work, and the FBI will continue working with our colleagues in law enforcement. Ugh, it's corporate law enforcement, not constitutional law enforcement. To investigate and charge those who inappropriately market drugs for scurrilous profits. This sends a powerful message to pharma companies. You must not profit put profits ahead of patients' health and doctors' trust. I like the the way that's phrased there. Can't put profits ahead of patients' health. Not like you should have healthy people. No. Patients' health and doctors' trust. Obviously the most important things to this person. Drugs should be prescribed because they make people better, not because they make companies money. No. Drugs should not be just prescribed because they make people better. That's so ridiculous. Said Western District Washington U.S. Attorney Durkin. He sounds like somebody who would prosecute people for using heroin, despite the fact that he just said that drugs should be prescribed to make people better which means heroin, basically. You should go around giving people heroin because this guy says that is what the purpose is and that they should be prescribed for making people feel better. So, isn't that interesting? The coordination by our office, the U.S. Attorney General's office, U.S. Attorney's office in the Eastern District of New York and Massachusetts and Maine Justice also shows that there is no corner of the country where these actors can hide. Yeah, whatever that means. Today's resolution is a testament to coordination and cooperation throughout the Department of Justice to ensure drug manufacturers are held to account and fraud is pop properly addressed. So apparently, properly addressing fraud and being held to account means that they just pay the people who are allegedly supposed to hold them accountable, and it all just goes away. That, apparently, is being held to account and fraud being properly addressed. Yes, it is being properly addressed as far for, as their eyes go because they are, in fact, instruments of the fraud so that the money can be properly laundered to the individuals that control all these mechanisms in the first place. And con in continuation, the District of Massachusetts is proud to have played a role in the resolution of this matter and ensuring that drug manufacturers' claims regarding their products are truthful and properly supported. Yikes. These uh, these people really can play the word games, can't they? And that's interesting that it's being included the District of Massachusetts. So it's not the state of Massachusetts, but it's the District of Massachusetts. And there are no excuses for illegal marketing off-label drugs. Again, here we go with that's all they did. Offering kickbacks to healthcare professionals and ripping off the taxpayers by defrauding Medicaid and other programs. Yeah, that's because that's... Uh, sort of the job of the attorney generals here, I guess. <laughs> Said New York State Attorney General Schneiderman, with this settlement, the message we are sending is clear. Biotechnology giants are not above the law, and my office will continue to ensure that prescriptions be written based on medical judgment, not profit motive. Wow. That's just... That's truthful, but in a extremely dodgy way as the British like to say. The criminal plea agreement. The information alleges the following. Beginning at the launch of Aranesp in 2002 and extending until 2007, Amgen illegally introduced Aranesp for uses and at dosage levels that the FDA had specifically declined to approve due to insufficient clinical evidence to establish their safety and efficacy. No problem doing that with... Uh, a certain um, pointy substance that shall not be named. In particular, Amgen illegally introduced Aranesp into the oncology and 
nephrology ESA markets. Contending that it be used for patients suffering from anemia due to chronic kidney disease or chemotherapy at off-label unapproved doses that were larger and less frequently administered than those approved by the FDA for these patient populations. I guess that's the situation where you take a drink every time they say the word unapproved. <laughs> Amgen also illegally introduced RNS into the oncology ESA market, attending that abuse to treat anemia caused by cancer, irrespective of whether the patient had been prescribed chemotherapy, a use which the FDA had never approved and which the FDA subsequently determined caused an increased risk of death. You know, like that way that it's phrased there. An increased risk of death. <laughs> Wow. In particular, in 2007, the FDA mandated that a black box label be added to RNSP's label, warning that RNSP increased the risk of death in patients with active malignant disease cancer, receiving neither chemotherapy nor radiation. At approximately the time that the FDA issued the black box warning, Amgen ceased its promotion of RNSP for the treatment of anemia caused by cancer rather than the cancer's treatment. That sounds like they're trying to cover the company's butt there from being a basically homicidal. Amgen's internal sales and marketing materials made plain that Amgen's misbranding of Uranus was the company's core business strategy to gain market share from its ESA competitor, Procrit, sold by Johnson & Johnson. At the time of Uranus's 2002 launch, doctors typically prescribed Procrit to treat the anemic patient populations for which Uranusp was approved. To compete with Procrit, Amgen built the Uranusp commercial strategy around the unapproved off-label approach of less frequent dosing schedule, which Amgen sales representatives argued was more convenient for patients and more profitable for doctors. It's a really weird argument to put there. Amgen implemented this illegally commercial effort through its promotion of off-label doses from two to four times larger than those approved by the FDA, administered far less frequently than approved by the FDA. And we can continue on, but you can probably imagine how the rest of that goes. Not to mention this is not an isolated case. There are many more like it. Moving on to the civil settlement agreement, or the, well, yeah. The $612 million civil settlement encompasses broader allegations by the United States against Amgen and those contained in the information. Civil settlement agreement resolves claims contained in 10 lawsuits against Amgen. They are brought under the Quitom or whistleblower provisions of the False Claims Act, which allow private citizens to bring civil actions on behalf of the United States and share in recovery. Seven of these cases currently are pending in the Eastern District of New York, two are pending in the District of Massachusetts, one in the Western District of Washington. Ten cases are United States X Rel Contour v. Amgen Inc. Civil action number blah blah blah. So there you go. They're uh, literally wiping all of those cases off the board. Go figure. It's because all of the, the uh, courts are corrupt banks, essentially. And you can read the rest of this article if you so choose. And we could look at the corporate integrity agreement, but you can imagine how interesting that will go. Not to mention, CIA is, like I mentioned before, an interesting acronym. Then, to put this all into context, we can go to the Levantine Adventure, The Travels and Mission of the Chevalier Darvu, 1653-1697, by Warren H. Lewis. And this is the 1963 first paperback, or first American, uh, first American edition not paperback, it's hardcover. On page 33, it states, The Turk, normally so corrupt in matters of administration, controls his controlled his food markets and especially his bakeries in a startlingly different manner. Startlingly different manner. Darvu records that on one occasion, the Constantinople chief of police, making a surprise inspection of the baker's quarter, caught one of them selling bread underweight and instantly ordered the culprit to be baked alive in his own oven. A sentence which was carried out on the spot. An ambassador who heard of the incident observed to the Kemakan 
as this officer was called, that the punishment had perhaps been a trifle severe, and received an answer which makes a contribution to the tiresome controversy over punishment which rages today. I entirely agree, he said, but by the timely aid of this severe punishment, we shall prevent others from offending for a much longer period through their fear of being similarly treated. Whereas you Franks have to keep on punishing because your sentences are not severe enough to deter your criminals from sinning again. Now I wonder what the conclusion would be made by these types of people were they to look at that document that we just read. Additionally, in the Constitution, the quote, supreme law of the land, not corporate bylaw and not U.S. law, the Constitution is the supreme law. According to the Constitution, it states that one of the charges of a legitimate constitutional Congress, mind you, is to coin money, regulate the value of thereof, and a foreign coin, and fix the standard of weights and measures. Now, the reason why that clause is important is because only Congress can fix the standard of weights and measures. Not an international standards organization, not an entity of the United Kingdom's government, nor the Department of Justice, nor anyone else other than a legitimately elected Congress. They're the only ones. And the reason why, what, and again, this points to concrete evidence that not only do we not have a legitimately elected Congress, you have all of these entities parading around under the color of law, directly violating the U.S. Constitution, and they know it. That is about as enemy as you can possibly get. So the question is, if fitting justice for a baker that undersells bread is to be baked in his own oven, then what would be a fitting outcome for the liars and traitors, the thieves and murderers, the traffickers and groomers, the corrupt usurpers, what should be done to our abusers? Perhaps we should fight them as our ancestors did in the streets, in our beds, in our minds, and with our heads. No negotiation, no surrender, no deals, and no quarter. Sankartier. Cartier.